Weather travel destinations are used to seeing an influx of out of state travelers every January and February. But this year, snowbirds flocking to the Gulf Coast states have more than sun and sand on their minds. Dr. Jason West is an integrative medicine physician who has treated many COVID patients over the last year. He joins me to discuss this rocky rollout of the vaccine is kind of where I wanted to start, Dr. West. Here in Minnesota, we know it's been a challenge to get the vaccine the vaccine out to top tier groups, but then you have people uh, coming into other states and taking vacations just to get this vaccine. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. We should be surprised. You know, it's the fear of missing out and there's so much misinformation around about the coronavirus, the infection rates, the death rates. Where's the vaccines? What are you supposed to be doing? and what's feeling this perfect storm of people saying, hey, I heard there's a vaccine available, and then they run to get it, whether it be in a different location or a different state. Uh, here in Minnesota, we started our rollout program um, last week, and because of supply and demand, the system crashed because so many people were logging on, so many people were calling, trying to get signed up for it, and it was on a first-come, first-served basis. Now, uh, state officials have done something to where they're doing a lottery program. I wanted your thoughts on a lottery system for distributing the vaccine. On one hand, it seems like a good idea. On another hand, it seems odd. Well, what I would say to people is, you know what, I think there's a little bit too much, I guess, happiness about the vaccine. And what I mean by that is even the CDC says it's not the vaccine that is going to fix the pandemic. It's a combination of a bunch of different factors. And so many people ask me, how do I get it so that I don't come in contact with the virus? I'm like, it's too late. We're all gonna be exposed to it. What you should do is making sure you're following the rules of health, which is washing your hands, making sure you get enough sleep, practicing not being around people that you know that have the coronavirus, good food, good air, vitamin A, vitamin C. And then if you decide to do the vaccine on top of that, like that's what we should be all be concentrating on is health and taking a big deep breath because the vaccine was only really approved to reduce coughing and reduce you know fevers and, and some of the infection markers it's not really approved to make sure that it leaves the world as we know it you know that travel wasn't being advised because of how easily spread this virus is and over the christmas holidays and new years we were seeing record travelers um, an, an amount of travelers who hadn't flown and gone to airports in many months since last march and now people are not only flying but they're flying to states to hopefully get vaccinated. That's what they're hoping. Um, what are your suggestions on people going to airports right now? Well, what I tell people when I ask is, first of all, if you don't need to get on a flying tuna fish can with a bunch of other people, maybe now is not the right time. But if that's necessary, and if you're getting cabin fever and you have to get out or you're trying to go to the business meeting or the family, is get your immune system as healthy as possible and recognize you're gonna come in contact with infectious disease, whether it's bacteria, whether it's coronavirus, whether it's the other air transmitted viruses. And then what you need to do is get your immune system as healthy as possible, reduce your stress levels, try to reduce your sugar intake. I mean, no one's talking about the fact that one of the biggest risk factors for the coronavirus and how serious it is is your blood sugar level. So reduce your white sugar, your high fructose intake, get your vitamin D levels up, your vitamin A levels up, take vitamin C, take zinc, and do everything you can to manage stress so that your immune system isn't down and you can handle the virus as healthy as possible. Okay, Dr. West, we were talking about vaccine vacations. You just touched on something though. I'm gonna take a big fat left turn here and just talk about what you just mentioned. This is the first time, and let me tell you, I have done a ton of interviews over the last 10 months about this with medical experts from around this country and from other countries. You said something about sugar. Now that piques my curiosity because I am a huge sugar 
Mm, I would go as far as to say addict. I will eat more chocolate and more sugar candy in a day than most people should be allowed. But here's some good news for you. I actually think that dark chocolate, I mean, there's some neat things that are in dark chocolate. Now, milk chocolate, it's a little bit different story. But when we talk about sugar, here's the impact. Man-made sugar, what it does is it reduces what's called your phagocytic index. What that is, it's just your ability to come in contact with a bad guy and then it slowly engulfs or it eats that. We call that process phagocytosis. And too much sugar lowers that phagocytic index so that your body isn't efficient as it could be in eliminating infectious agents, antigens, bad guys, viruses, parasites, bacteria. And so what that is, is just a basic rule of health. Reducing your sugar intake reduces your inflammation and it's so much, so healthy for you. Matter of fact, I'm just reaching over inside my consult room. We have this book called Suicide by Sugar that I recommend to people all the time. And my props to the, the author, Nancy Appleton, and says, if you eat sugar, it, there's 108 ways that it ruins your health. And so happens is it makes your immune system less healthy than it should be. Well, you just ruined my day, Dr. West. <laughs> but no, Nancy, here's not some really. Good news. It's just stuff that I it's, need to hear. <laughs> Now, here's some good news. Uh -huh. It's not sweeteners, it's sugar. So let me clarify what I mean by that. Sugar from apples, oranges, raisins, molasses, pure maple syrup, honey. There's some really neat ways to get some sweetness in food. It's the inflammatory component of white sugar and refined fructose uh -huh. corn syrup that is the danger. So, so like, you're telling you don't have me to not have sugar. You're telling me my jelly beans and my gummy bears probably have to go. No, I'm not telling <laughs> you that at all. Now, okay. Eighty percent of communication is nonverbal. <laughs> I'm not telling you that. I love that. You know what? We're gonna have more conversations and I'm gonna hit you up about this because I'm gonna start doing some more research. This is the first time that I've really uh, had a conversation about COVID and sugar's effects on this virus. But I apologize, I am out of time. Thanks for your nonverbals. They're very helpful. <laughs> as I shake my head and you can't see me. You're welcome, Betsy. <laughs> we'll talk again.